When I say sourdough, the first thing that probably comes to mind are internet videos on TikTok or YouTube of people that are teaching you how to make sourdough. They're explaining to you what live cultures are and they're probably even pulling a jar out of their refrigerator and they're saying, hey, look at this. And it's this goopy, watery, smelly mess. They feed their starter and they have a regiment about it and they're so excited about it. You go to a restaurant, they bring this beautifully crusty sourdough bread out to you that kind of has a little off taste. And some people, I'd say even 20 years ago, probably weren't really excited about that, but we are now. We look forward to that. Sourdough is huge right now, but in the 18th century, the time period that we make these videos about, people were not excited about sourdough, generally. Some people, French, maybe, but English people, American people, sourdough was not exciting to them. I know somebody who has a sourdough starter that is 130 years old and they're so excited about it. And when I hear that and I start thinking about sourdough, it makes me think this is a time honored tradition and people have loved this since the beginning of the very first time they accidentally made sourdough. And I don't think that that's really the case. In fact, in the 18th century, they were making bread and bread was so popular, we've covered it so much on the channel, that it was even regulated by law. So bread is such a part of their day and they care so much about it that sourdough was kind of an afterthought. It wasn't something that people were excited about. They were excited about nice, fresh bread made from the baker using yeast from the brewer. So if it wasn't sought after in the time period, then why even make it? That's the question, right? And we have to look at sourdough for what it is, not necessarily what we think that it is. They weren't using it in the same way that we are at all. In fact, they didn't have a refrigerator or someplace nice and cool to keep a sourdough starter. So it's completely flipped on its head and sourdough is made out of necessity in the time period. If you didn't live in a place where you could just go to the brewer to get some yeast or go to the baker to get your bread, well, then where did yeast come from? And that's the question. That's the whole thing about sourdough is what's going on with yeast? What's going on with live cultures? And what's that doing in our bread? The relationship between the brewer and the baker was essential in the time period, especially if you were living in a community. They worked together hand in hand. The baker's best friend was the brewer because that's where he got barm. This is barm. So this is what is scraped off of a fresh batch of beer. And that is where the yeast for the bread came from. So the baker would go over to the brewer and say, hey, I need some barm, I got some bacon to do. He gets his barm, he goes back, and this is how he is getting yeast into everything that he's baking for that day. So the question is, where do you get yeast if nobody's brewing beer? And that's the problem because the folks in the 18th century, they needed bread, they wanted bread. And there are lots of ways that you can make bread without leavening, without the bread, rising right we covered ash cakes and we've covered all sorts of things on the channel where you have bread but it's not the bread that, that's sought after it's not this light fluffy structure loaf of bread that they want so how do you create that if you don't have the brewer to go take some farm from every morning if you lived in a community of people this wasn't a problem at all for you beer and bread were essential parts of the diet for folks in the 18th century but say you were a sailor and you were going to be away for a long time, or you're traveling through the frontier and you're going somewhere away from a community, or times where it got so cold that yeast was a problem, they couldn't keep it alive. There were different instances where people had to lean on another way to make bread, and that's what we're gonna talk about right now with this recipe. This recipe comes from Plows and Politics by Carl Raymond Woodward, and it's called An Experienced Wreck to Make Yeast. Boil one quart of wheat bran in a gallon or three quarts of water. Strain it and let it stand to be cold as milk from the cow. Then put in some rye flour, which is best, so as to make it as thick as yeast usually is. At the same time, put in half a spoonful of ginger and one gill of molasses. Stir it well together. Set it where it will be warm till it rises, which is known by its foaming and bubbling, which will be from two to eight hours according to the season. As soon as it rises, set it in a cold place but not where it will freeze, which would spoil it. It will keep in a cool place three or four days. Use it in somewhat large quantity than yeast. A pint will rise four large loaves. What we know now is that yeast is all around us. It's in the air. And we have, we have different bacteria that is in our atmosphere. And that is what we're working with when we're working with sourdough. 
they didn't understand that science yet, but they knew something was happening. So they're boiling this wheat bran and they're going to set that out with some flour and they're gonna let something happen to it. They don't really quite understand what's happening like we do today. But it's still a very similar process. You're gonna to mix together grain and water and set that out and let the atmosphere do its work. The first thing we notice in this recipe that we think now, man, that's strange, is that they're boiling this bran. We wouldn't boil this today because we're gonna say, if you boil it, then you're killing what's already on the wheat bran, and we don't wanna do that. They didn't quite understand that then. I'm not sure if they were trying to create a sterile sort of environment or really what was going on there. If you've got an idea, let me know in the comments section. One of the problems that we often have while we're trying to decipher 18th century recipes is that we don't get all of the measurements for everything, and that's pretty much across the board. So it gave us how much water to use, right? And it gave us how much molasses to use, and it gave us how much ginger to use. It did not give us how much flour to use. It says to make it as thick as yeast usually is. So are they talking about this? where this is the barm that they get from the brewer and it should be really loose, or are they talking about something that we would might be called like a sponge, where we're wanting to make this into like a thicker, goopier kind of paste and let it rise? Well, the truth is, is that I have tried this both ways and both ways have worked for me. I like the idea of keeping it a little bit looser, so that's what we're doing in this video. And you're still probably thinking, this doesn't seem like sourdough. Just wait, we're gonna get there. For our recipe here, I'm making yeast. We don't need nearly as much as the recipe called for. So I cut it in half. I used one pint of wheat bran and I used about two quarts of water. You're gonna boil that. Once it boils, you're gonna remove it from heat and you're gonna strain it and let it cool. Then you are going to add flour, the molasses and the ginger. And then we're just gonna let that sit. Now, I will say that this says two to eight hours, but it will likely take much longer than that. All right, so for our actual bread, we're gonna create a really simple bread recipe here. We're gonna take about a cup and a half of rye flour. We're gonna take maybe three cups of all-purpose flour or wheat flour, whatever you have. We're gonna add some salt. And then we're gonna add about a cup of this mixture that we have, and then probably another cup or so of warm water just to make that paste the right consistency. Okay, so we've got our dough ball here. This is our loaf of bread. We're gonna set it aside in a minute to let it rise. But this is the really interesting part about sourdough in the time period. We're gonna take off a piece, and this is where sourdough starts to come into play, right? So this is called leaven in the time period, and leaven means old dough. And what we're gonna do with this is we're gonna store this back, and this is gonna be what we use to make our next loaf of bread. And the way that they did that was it was just gonna be for a couple of days, or maybe the next day. They would pack this in flour to help give it a kind of a short-term preservation. If you're gonna hold it off for several days to a week or something like that, you're going to coat it in salt, and then we're even gonna bury it in the salt so that it preserves. They didn't have a refrigerator. They didn't have a way to keep this, you know, perfectly preserved. So they had to harden it. And so the cultures are gonna stay alive inside of this, but it's gonna get a crust on the outside. It's gonna be preserved. And the next time we're gonna go make bread, we're gonna scrape off as much of the salt as we can. We're gonna chop this hard bit of dough up into as many fibrous pieces as possible. We're gonna add water and stir that together. And it's going to create our new yeast for our new loaf of bread. And every time we do that, we're gonna pull off a piece. We're gonna preserve it in the same fashion and that is how this becomes sourdough bread. Our dough has risen, our loaf is ready to bake. We set this aside for about an hour, and here we go. Uh, it looks really great, I'm excited to see what it's gonna come out like. We're gonna get into a Dutch oven right now. Researching sourdough bread in the 18th century is very difficult. They didn't have terms like sourdough, and you can't search for things like live cultures. They don't quite understand what's happening with all those things. You eventually come across leaven, and then you think, okay, well, leaven is just leavening bread. But in the time period, they referred to leaven as this old dough that they were storing back to be able to create bread in the future. So old dough method or, or, or leaven is really what you arrive at when you're looking for sourdough. And it's funny because I think a lot of times today we think of sourdough bread as this old method of cooking. And not to say that it isn't, it was just done in a different way. It was called something different and it wasn't extremely sought after. Like I said earlier, there were some cultures that really liked the um, 
the taste that they're getting from sourdough bread or old dough method leavened bread. But it wasn't necessarily what they wanted in England. And depending on where you're at and what's in the atmosphere around you, different strands of this bread are gonna taste different over time, which is really interesting about it. And it's the same today. So this is a loaf of bread made in the fashion of the time period with yeast that is from the atmosphere and then didn't come from the brewer. Now, it's got a good bit of rye flour in there and it's got some ginger, it's got some molasses. I don't expect to actually be able to identify the ginger. I think the molasses might come through just a little bit, but for the most part, this is going to taste like a loaf of rye bread. In the future, after you use the leaven from this over and over and over again, that's where the sourdough is going to come into play. But let's see what this tastes like. Well, oh, this is really, really good rye bread. That's what it tastes like. We've got our sourdough, we've got the leaven that we held back and that's gonna turn into something different. That's where that sourdough taste is gonna come from in the future. Right now, it's just a fantastic bread that anybody would be happy to eat. In the future, it's gonna be a little bit more interesting.